Town Board Committee to hold a meeting. Please rise for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Jeff Renahan, first ward. Bill Carlos, second ward. Jessica Lopez, third ward. Michael Safone, fourth ward. Matthew Wolliver, fifth ward. Ann Shershin, sixth ward. Felicia Salvatore, town clerk. Jim Nelson, attorney for the town. John Baisley, town supervisor. Tonight's agenda on the committee to hold, we're going to have a presentation by the highway department. And then for the town board meeting, the first one's going to be a public hearing on 14 Bethlehem. The second one will be a public hearing on 16 Bethlehem. Number three, promotion to sorry. From sergeant to lieutenant. Number four, promotion from a detective to a police sergeant. Number five, accept a donation to the police department. Six, a resolution, water improvement area. Eight, a final order and bonding resolution. Seven, designate October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Eight, set a date for public hearing for the 2020 budget. Nine, authorize Croft Corners Fire Department Halloween Parade. Ten, authorize the supervisor to sign a vehicle clean agreement with Foma Wash Car Wash. 11, authorize Rachel Quintana to clean and maintain 48 Honey Lane. 12, set a day for public hearing in the Community Development Block Grant. 13, authorize Arlington Business Improvement Holiday Festival and Parade. 14, a bid award correction for CIPP spot repairs. 15, authorize the supervisor to sign change order for dial ride. 16, authorize the supervisor to sign the Lund Tamarack Bond Security Agreement. 17, accept the 2019 minutes. 18, notifications. New, New Horizon Resources, Inc., 134 Ennis Avenue, Group Home Apartment. 19, waive liquor license for 2170 South Road. 20, notification of fallen claims been referred to legal, Polito versus the town. And we'll have a committee reports. Um, this time I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules for any item that's on the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Would anybody like to discuss any item on the agenda? If not, make a motion to resume the rules. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to make a motion to take number three and number four and move them up to one and two. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Renahan. Be resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize the promotion of police sergeant, I'll say Mel Bruschetti, to the permanent position of police lieutenant at the yearly salary of $114,325.10, subject to a probationary period of not less than eight nor more than 26 weeks for civil service law, effective October 28, 2019. And be it further resolved that the town supervisor is authorized to execute and file all documentation required by the Dutch County Department of Human Resources in connection with this appointment. So moved. Second. second. Motion second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, Jeff, give, give his first name a try. Resolution 4. Be it resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize the promotion of Detective Jason D. Guy to the permanent position of police sergeant at the yearly salary of $104,968.93, subject to a probationary period of not less than eight, nor more than 26 weeks per civil service law, effective November 11th, 2019, and be it further resolved that the town supervisor is authorized to execute and file all documentation required by the Dutchess County Department of Human Resources in connection with this appointment. So moved. Second. The motion second. Any questions on this one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Congratulations.
Now we've taken care of those two. Um, presentation by the Highway Department will be the next thing on our agenda. They came. Welcome, gentlemen. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for having us. It's all yours. <laughs> all right. We, uh, Mike's going to run that PowerPoint because the uh, younger generation is way better at that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, we'll start. Um, our, our, uh, we tried to put some of our major, the major things we do together. Um, so uh, our, our, our major services, we've got them listed there. We do the, uh, the road de-icing, the snow removal, patching of the roads, paving of the roads. Our uh, season that's coming right up for us now, our, our leaf vacuum in the bag pickup. The, uh, we do the transfer station that everybody knows about. And uh, we also take care of all the street lighting the uh, storm drains, and we do the, uh, the name of the street. Traffic Division does all the other signs, but we do the, the street names. Mark, before you go on, why don't you introduce yourself for people that are on TV oh. that might not know who you are. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm Mark Pfeiffer. I'm the Highway Superintendent for the Town of Poughkeepsie. I'm Mike Simon, uh, Deputy Highway Superintendent. Thanks, Jim. So uh, you can jump in whenever you want to, Mike. Okay. Um, so um, we put together for the, for the snow season of uh, 18 and 19, um, just we put a couple pictures together. This is, this is our guys um, putting the plows on. We're, we're fortunate um, with our building anyway, we are able to pick up our snow plows, bring them in the garage, and we can hook them up um, inside. So that's a, it's a big help to us. Um, our, our fleet consists of, uh, we have 19 of the bigger trucks you see out with the front plows and the wings, and and we have uh, pickup trucks with us that also go. Um, another picture of us putting the plows in there. There's a couple of our guys. So uh, <clears throat> um, this this was last year's um, storms that we did. We had uh, 17 storms that we 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 were out in, um, and that's that we we plowed that many times, and for each snowstorm. There's usually at least two to three de-icing treatments, so we had 31 of those last year. Um, in our travels that we do, we it, there, we have about 148 miles of road. There are two sides, so we have 300 lane miles of roads that that we keep clear. And and we also do in the shared service part, we do some for the county. We do, I believe, it's 5.1 miles of county road for them, that, which they they reimburse us for. <clears throat> Uh, just a picture of our, our salt shed with our loaders. We have uh, two sheds that we have. We have the one on Tucker Drive that holds uh, about 4,000 ton. And then we have one down at our outpost on Alexander Boulevard, which holds uh, about 500 ton. So we're, we're, we're close to 5,000 ton in storage that we have. And fortunately this year for us, we are, we're full to start with, which doesn't happen very often, so it's a nice thing. It's just a picture of, of one of our... Uh, Sander and plow trucks that we have. We don't have many of them set up right now, so we're trying to just to get a picture of one that was together. <clears throat> so um, one of the other things that we do that a lot of people don't know is when the Christmas is over, we come curbside and pick up your trees. So when everybody's done with them, they take the ornaments off. They hopefully take the plastic bag up for us and put them out by the curb. And on average, we pick up about 1,500 of them a year. All right, this is uh, the 2018 uh, leaf season. Some uh, some statistics for you. There was uh, 30,000 leaf bags were provided to the residents in 2018. Um, we picked up about roughly 36,000 total cubic yards of bag leaves. And um, as far as the loose, loose leaves go, is about five million pounds of loose leaves collected curbside um, annually every year during the season. Uh, this picture you see right here is a picture of our bags. Um, unfolded. Uh, we, we do provide uh, the bags for the residents. Uh, we group them in groups of 10. Uh, residents come to the shop and, and they can pick them up. 
Uh, this is a picture of one of our leaf acts. Um, it's one of our newest ones. We refer to this as the one arm bandit. Um, there's one driver to it. Um, it, it reduces the number of, of crew, well, actually increases the number of crews um, because there's only one person that, that needs to operate this, this vehicle. Um, they've been working out great so far. We have three, three of these uh, type of machines right here. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much the only one. The city of Poughkeepsie has one that's similer. I don't think they maintain or they've, they've had it for a while, but this is, we, we're the first ones to, they designed this for us because it goes on our hook lift trucks. So the, some of the trucks we have, are, we call them uh, hook and goes or hook lifts. They're, they're similar to when a, you get to see a 40-yard dumpster so we can pull on and off different bodies. This truck also does sanding. You can put a flatbed on it. It, does, it dumps dumpsters for the transfer station. It does multiple things, so they're pretty handy for us. <clears throat> the next segment we'll get to is the roads with the uh, patching and paving. Um, this particular uh, picture right here is, gives a, a really good illustration that, that annually the county gives grades on the conditions of our roads. And as you can see, there, there's a lot of green. Green is, is good, yellow um, has some concerns, and they deem red to be um, needing improvement rather soon. So as you can see on the map there, there the, it shows predominantly a green green color. And this, this particular picture hasn't been updated um, from our paving season this summer. Um, a lot of the red you see on there is now green. So we're, we're moving in a, in a really good direction as far as uh, the maintaining of roads, repavement, and the, and the quality of the roads itself. Again, there's a spot that just shows how many miles of road we have. With lane miles, it doubles it. So we, 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 we are the, population-wise, I think we're the biggest town in Dutchess County. Road miles were the second. So we, we, we cover a big area. We totally surround the city of Poughkeepsie. <clears throat> So our, our paving season of 2018, we, we've had, we've been fortunate, we had the bond that we've been going with for a couple of years. In 2018, we paved um, 30, it was probably 35, 36 roads that we had, that we did. Um, so we're, we're, we're gaining a lot of ground with, with that bond that we had. And unfortunately, that's, it's, it's coming to an end, um, but we'll, we'll keep moving at a pretty, pretty good pace here. This is... Uh, just some of our equipment we have. This is our, our excavator. We're just doing a, we're adding a pipe in, doing, uh, crossing a, a drainage line across the road. And behind it, you can see our, our flush truck that's there. Yeah, a lot, a lot of times when um, people don't realize what goes into to paving a road, um, we check the drainage. Um, we work with the water department and sewer department so they could uh, check their, their utilities underground as far as manholes and uh, water valves, so to speak. Because the last thing we want to do is pave a road, then dig it up. Um, you know, that does, just doesn't make sense. So there's a lot of prep going into it. We check our drainage on this particular picture. We're replacing a cross ditch from catch basin to catch basin. And Central Hudson is good at digging off our roads up. There's yeah, a way we need to help them. They're fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead, Mike. Uh, this, this right here is a list of uh, 2018 roads that we, we did pave. And as we're getting to the 2019 paving season this, this past summer here, we did 20-plus roads. Um, we actually have one more we're doing uh, next week. We're going to start prepping for that, Jerry Road. Um, once that's done, um, it should be should be into the season. Yeah, if it's, well, we're, we're heading for leaves, and that takes all of us. Here's another picture here of uh, of one of our guys, Kyle Brown. He's um, we, we this is another cross ditch right here. We did that. We're just uh, buttoning out that ditch right there. And this is a list of the roads that we paved this summer for 2019. So the uh, the transfer station, everybody knows. Um, we took a few pictures of this. We we do ten of those a year. Um, we start in April and we go through September. It's two a month that we do. Um, it's not exactly every other weekend, but uh, and, and we don't do it in July because we found over the years that there were so many people away um, in July that it, it it was more cost effective for us to cut it down to ten instead of twelve. And it seems to work good, but. Um, uh, we've noticed in the last year that as the economy has been going up, so has the transfer station. So we've been zooming. Um, we just, the couple times this year, our line was back to Popeyes. Um, so, it, but we do. Uh, amazingly enough, we as we bring the cars in, we do a car a minute that we empty. So our uh, our average car, um, the average cars we get were usually around 400 cars per transfer station. That, that we're empty in. So, uh, and this is 2018's uh, totals. We don't have 19's yet. We had 4,865 cars. 
436 tons of uh, waste received, and we collected uh, 744 tires that we get in. We take pretty much anything as long as it's not hazardous. So you can see here in the picture, that's, our, that's where we pick our, the brush comes in. And we get a pretty good mountain of brush every time. And uh, we've no, one of the things we definitely have noticed since we've started a transfer station that we get a lot less roadside garbage. We'll still get somebody every once in a while, you know, throwing a TV out or a mattress or something like that. But compared to what it used to be, it's, our town's a lot cleaner. And it, it, it's definitely a nicer thing to see. Yeah, you won't see uh, Supervisor Baisley like Mayor Rollins. Grabbing mattresses. <laughs> oh yeah, you won't. you won't have to. Yeah. Here's some of the some of the totals for 2019. Um, we did 4,400 cars, uh, roughly 462 tons of total waste material, and about 600 tires. Uh, the next segment we're going to go to is just some of the additional services that we do provide, um, as far as catch basins and storm drains. Um, there was a picture um, earlier that that showed a, our flusher truck. Um, we're able to suck out the catch basin. Uh, and uh, snake the line, so to speak, uh, to make sure there's no blockage and to get, get things flowing, um, as well as the vegetation management. Uh, here's the a picture of it. The sucking out of the drains is for your MS4 compliance also. Right. We have to do a, a percentage of our, of our catch base. I think it's 20 I think it's 20% we have to clean every year. So we keep track of all that. And, and all of our roads have to be swept once a year as part of the MS4. Mm -hmm. We're... we're a, our population is high enough where we, we, we fall into that category, so all our roads have to be swept once a year. And, uh, here's a picture of our flusher truck in action. The one thing that the flusher truck has come in really handy for, um, it's not only a flusher truck, it's, it's a hydrovac. So one of the big things that that's helping us out with now is there's so many more gas lines in the streets. Um, and if you hit a gas line the way that the, the new rules are, you get in big trouble. So uh, we, we take this truck out and we'll hydrovac down to the gas line and find it before, without, you know, instead of just digging it with the backhoe or the excavators, it gives us a lot more accurate uh, ditch to dig. And, and, that, and that, that won't break it. You know, we're, that's just using water and suction. So it, it's, that truck's a, a big asset to us. So we have... Um, there, there, there's 5,000 plus catch basins. I don't have an exact number, but there's there's over 5,000 catch basins that we maintain in the town. And um, like Mike said before, whenever we're paving a road, all the road we've probably with the bond that we did, we paved well over 100 roads um, within the last uh, three and a half years. So every road we're doing, we're repairing every catch basin, making sure they're all in good shape, checking the pipes. Um, so I um, I, th I think we're really gaining on. On, on what we have and to, to maintain it now hopefully will be easier if we, if we keep a good program going. Yeah, here's a picture of, uh, of some drainage improvements right here and another picture of our, of our flush truck. So the tree work um, also that we do, we, we were, um, another picture is coming up, we were fortunate enough to get a grant for that truck right there. So we now have a bucket truck for trees that goes up 42 feet. Um, so we have a couple guys that are certified uh, to run that, you know, that, uh, for, um, they went to school to get a certification for it when, so that we every three years it has to be updated. So 42 feet I thought was a, was a good height for us. Uh, some of the professional tree guys, they'll truck will go up to 80. Um, we didn't really want that. I think when it gets up that high, we let the right guys do what they're doing all the time. But, but now we're going to be able to do a lot of tree trimming, which we haven't been able to do in a long time. So this year we were out quite a bit with it. Over the winter, if we're not having a, a horrible winter, we're going to be able to trim trees all winter long. So all the ones that are hanging over the street and whacking the trucks and all that stuff, we're hopefully going to be able to catch up and, and do a lot of stuff with that. Uh, here's a, a list of, of some of our, well, basically our inventory for our, our equipment. Um, we have light to medium duty trucks. We have loaders, um, an excavator, some leaf machines, water truck, trailers, dump truck with a crane, tractors, uh, some of our heavy in trucks, uh, including the plows and the wings. We have backhoes, utility vehicles, the flusher truck, fuel truck, chipper, bucket truck, and sanders. And here's a picture of a portion of our fleet. And this, this right here is our utility truck. This, is, this goes out on almost every major job that we have. It, it's, it's equipped with pretty much everything to do the job. Um, that, that's a, definitely a valuable piece of equipment. 
And here's a picture of our mechanic service truck. Um, they're able to go out on the road and, and do, do some repairs there um, if the truck is unable to come back. Um, and and our, our mechanics are, uh, are real good at that as well. Under, on the, if you go back to that, under that blue cover you see, that's a welder. That's right on there. So we're able to go out and, like, we, we've had it plenty of times where a plow will break right in a snowstorm that's out there, and we can go out and fix the frame of it, whatever we need to do. And on the far side of it, that's a, that's a crane that does it. So uh, it's just our bigger trucks to go change a tire, it's not an easy task. So when you have the crane involved, it makes things a lot easier for it. That's our new 10-wheeler that we had gotten um, just about, a, I guess, just about a year ago, right, last January? Yeah. Almost a year old that we had. We replaced the one that we had. It was a 1999. It was, it had seen its time, and, and uh, but that's that's a nice new truck for us. Here's a picture of our, of our loader, and then we have a John Deere tractor as well. The, the tractor does a lot of the mowing on the side of the road for us. Um, that is very important for us to you know to keep that area clean too, and it's amazing how how much garbage you uncover once that's mowed. Um, so it, once we were mowed, we're able to to pick that up as well. To try to you know keep the town looking as as good as possible. And some of the uh, some of the other things we do here is the maintaining the streetlights. Um, that's divided between us and uh, Central Hudson. We we maintain a majority of them. Here's two here's two um, pictures of them right there. And as you guys know, for the the um wooden poles we got all the new lighting on that so that's been a big help to us now we're to the led lighting so um that's that's a big help and hopefully they won't need quite as much servicing mm -hmm. and the street signs they're like i said they're, those are the signs that we replace the name of the street and uh over in fairview we replace them a lot because the college kids all have them in their rooms <laughs> so yeah, i think it's part of initiation <laughs> <turn to yourself. laughs> Um, the next topic here, the, the shared services, uh, the interdepartmental uh, with the school districts and with Dutchess County. Um, I, I said earlier, we, we work with the water and sewer department on a daily basis. Uh, Tommy and myself, the deputy um, water superintendent, we, we talk daily, um, not only about the day's activities, but what's coming up in the future as well. And I know Mark talks with Keith and Franco and, and Eddie as well. We try to, try to work together you know, to make life easier so we can get more done. Um, as far as the school district goes, um, Spackenkill School Dr District in particular, they contact, contact us almost every snowstorm um, to get our take on what the storm's going to be, um, it basically so they can make the call on whether to delay or cancel. And, and we, we sought their parking lots for them, the four schools. We have an agreement with them that we got a shared service grant for. Um, so we sought their parking lots um, for them, and, and they reimbursed us for doing that as well. Yeah, I hear some of the recent pictures of us uh, working with the recreation department at, at Greenvale. Water and sewer are also involved in that. That's the, for the, the they're putting the new um, bathroom down at Greenvale Park. Mm -hmm. And this is our staff. We have uh, 28 full-time uh, people. That includes two girls in the office. And most of the time we have four seasonal staff. We get them for during the summer. They come on and, and do the uh, weed whacking with us on the sides of the roads. And we get a couple extra guys for to pick up the leaves. Cause it's just The leaves will be starting at um, October 28th, and we'll stay right on that. That's our whole department for six weeks. It usually takes us to in between the first and second week of December as long as the weather stays good. If we get bad weather, it goes further. So that's... That's most one of our most difficult tasks we do. That's that's a tough job. Just a shot of our building, and that concludes our presentation. Thanks, gentlemen. Anybody got any questions for? No, but you missed that you put up the Christmas lights too in Arlington. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, and you're yes, going to decorate our do. Christmas tree too. We yeah. do the, we do the wreaths on the poles. And we put them up for them. And again, that's basically a shared service, too, because the, the Arlington Business District reimburses our guys to go out and do that for it. So uh, we, we, yeah, we put them up and down. And we all, and the other thing we do that's not, that's not in there is we take the snow off the sidewalks, too, all through Arlington, N55 and all that stuff. We have a special, we didn't even get that in there. We have a special piece of equipment that, that goes on that. And uh, another difficult job because the state likes to bury them back on us very quickly. 
So the other thing I'd like to say is that I think we're really lucky. Anytime I know that I have had to call and ask for help or residents have issues, your crew addresses it immediately. I've multiple times gotten calls from residents about how friendly they were and let their kids check out the equipment and just really nice. You make us look good, so we appreciate thank that. You. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you very much. That. Yeah, thanks. Anybody else? Too. Nope. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mark, you can stop sweating now. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mike should be doing this next year by himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That brings us back to the regular town board meeting. First thing on the agenda is a public hearing for unsafe properties, 14 Bethlehem Place. Make a motion to open the first public hearing. Second. Okay. Aye. 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 You need a couple minutes to set a point? Just, it'll take me a minute. Okay. further than we were the last time. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it so much easier on my phone's computer. Mm -hmm. It really does. Good evening, my name is Wayne C. Sean, and I'm Deputy Building Inspector for the Town of Poughkeepsie. First one up tonight is uh, 14 Bethlehem. We've had a history with this property. Uh, goes back quite a number of years. Um, let's go. So the town board, we've brought an action back at 14, uh, we're going back uh, like six years or so. Um, the place was really run down. It was a flop house. A um, lot of needles, drug packaging, kinds of plate things like that. Uh, was never really cared for or kept up with. Um, so, you know, it was presented here just like we're doing tonight. It was presented to a town board to take appropriate action. So. And you can follow along yourselves, but pretty much what happened was uh, when we got to the point of where we were actually talking with contractors at the site um, to get bids on this, uh, we were 
contacted by the banking institution that was foreclosing on the property. And with that attorney, in the, in the way that your law is worded, the building department has a little bit of latitude for when things are going right to be able to stop an action like that meaning the demolition of a building if we've got some kind of good movement that's uh, in a positive vein. So after we halted, based on this attorney saying that they were trying to get somebody to buy the property, they actually, it didn't happen overnight kind of thing, but it did happen, and they did sell the property. Um, this is what we look like now after receiving complaints on the property. So, you know, one of the things that I do for the town is to come out to check out this these kinds of things in the town. So it, it's real clear when you start getting up closer what happens. Um, this one has been literally abandoned and walked away from. Uh, we know who the owners are on paper, um, and the bank may be trying to do something with the property, but in, in the meantime, we're still you know, here dealing with it every in an everyday kind of a fashion. So these are just to kind of show you that, you know, the, the overgrown weeds, dead trees, things that we find on the property. And it doesn't, it doesn't show up well here, but the pictures, there's bags of garbage mm. on the ground. We've got some compromised electric. At least the stuff was up the last time, but now it's been yanked down and kind of hanging in the yard. This is how we find it. Doors open, not secure. And this is what you see when you walk in the door. They had a demo permit for this particular property, um, which, the, that's what you'd be looking at here is, you know, just a good demo job, but putting things back should have had a renovation permit issue. If they could have rolled the demo over to it, wouldn't have been a big deal, but they already started doing things past what they were allowed. But for whatever the reason, they've, they've just walked away. And the permits are expired. You have ex expiration dates on, on building permits for a good reason. This is one of those good reasons. Um, so this is when I walked in there and I'm, I'm you know, taking pictures and, and assessing damage and that kind of thing, I'm looking at wires that are energized. Mm. Now, I mean, and, and literally, I didn't have to open a door to walk in. It was, the door was open, the path was free and clear. Anybody could have walked in there. Mm -hmm. And they might not have been found for a while. Mm -hmm. So they began with starting to put in some heating system. Okay. I think there were other areas that probably deserve more attention, but. So this is what you see today. Is, it's right here in these pictures. This is what it looks like in there. They moved a bunch of things in, some cabinets, a bunch of equipment, and, and for whatever the reason, it, they just abandoned it. I mean, these are all somebody's personal possessions, you know, work tool type things, and they just walked away. That's your view back to the street. Obviously, we had to issue orders um, for it, stop work order first, because now you're out of date and out of scope of permit. That'd be the first thing. And then from there, we move forward with the rest of the stuff. We make sure that we issue three sets of notices when we do these actions. When we condemn a building, there's certain protections that we have to make sure that any owner is afforded. So that's where we go into the posting of that order, and then we give them what is called a notice to be heard, which this board has acted on before um, in, in different location in town, and we give them a cease and desist order as well. That means no occupancy, no use. We try to curtail anybody coming in there for very good reasons, but 
So we post these things and we make it part of the, the certification process when we serve people, companies, organizations. So after the days go by, after orders have been issued and days go by, everybody has a time limit. Somewhere in there, you have to deal with that time limit. So us is, it's basically for, you know, it's a 30-day thing uh, on our orders to remedy. The other orders can be immediate so that we have the ability to be um, more proactive if we needed to be, if somebody was moving into it, trying to do something with it. So when we go back and check, now this is what we're seeing on, on this date, that there's no compliance with any of the orders. This is pretty simple. It meets all the, these thresholds, which is, is what your Chapter 71 is set up for. And that would be the end of this presentation. Does anybody have any questions about it? Pretty thorough. Before we go on that, is there anybody else here who would like to speak on um, 14 Bethlehem? Please try to come on up. Please try to keep it around three minutes. Live How are you? Street. Been there a bunch of times when Wayne was there for, for what, over 10 years? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, you know, they sold it, like he said, but they sold it for $1,000. I mean, you know, come on. I mean, you can't buy a car that'll pass inspection for $1,000. Okay? And it's just getting worse and worse and worse every day. You know, the windows are open. The, the windows in the back, I don't know if you could see in these pictures, Wayne. This window right here, the, mm -hmm. the glass part is open and just the screen is down and has a wire coming in. So I think that's how they're getting in and out of the house because I think that there's somebody is going in there's there. Going in I think now. there's people going in and out of there now, you know, still, you know, and it's just, it doesn't stop. You know, they come up, like I said before, to the rail trail. And that's how they get in into the back of those houses, and you know, I mean, it's it's been going on for what 13 years. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I got to give props to Wayne. He goes in there unarmed. You don't know what you're going to run into in there. There could be coyotes. There could be a drug addicts. It could be anybody, written right or wrong. I mean, he should be escorted in with the police. You know, really, when you're going into a house like that, the doors are wide open. They're not even closed, so anything could be in there. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, I think it's time. I mean, I understand that the town, you know, has to go by your rules be, because you, you got to go by the law. But it just seems like these other people are a step ahead on the law, and they have their own rules that they go by. You know, and that's and that's how they're pulling all this off. I think we're at the step now. We're one step ahead, and we can actually take action now. Well, I think yeah. I think you're onto it now. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, let's face it. It's I don't think by now anybody's going to fix it. It's going to cost three times what the house would be worth. It's not a real big house, you know. And nobody's been there in over a year. The to mow the lawn, anything, you know. And it's just, you know, well, I think you know, whether be they, they they put a, a paved driveway in that's all overgrown whether it was for a tax purpose to run the people out of money that, because I think the lawyers are the ones that's holding the money and they sold it four or five times since the first time, since they sold it, since the lawyer bought it for a thousand. So he's been, you know, making 50 here, whatever he's been getting off of the people and then running them out of money. He's been doing this for, since, thir since 2013, you know, I mean, when does it, when does it end? You know, I mean, before, before something really serious happens, right? You've been there, you know. I'm not making this up. Mm -hmm. Right. You well, know. Victor, I think you'll be happy with this resolution. Mm -hmm. That's good. moving forward. Anybody else that would like to discuss 14 Bethlehem? So should I leave? You can leave. I can go back there. Unless you want to talk about the next one. Well, no. Huh. I just want to make sure I didn't cancel the Yankee game for nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they canceled it for you. They're not playing. I made it rain. <laughs> yeah, right. 
make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Whereas by resolution 918 SC1, from 2019, adopted on September 18th, 2019, the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie has determined that the premises and the buildings located at 14 Bethlehem Place, Poughkeepsie, County of Dutchess, State of New York, bearing grid number 6262-03-049489, the premises, the owner of record being Abraham Rivas Rojas and Eurisa Espela, Joint tenants with rights of survivorship are dangerous, unsafe, dilapidated, and an imminent threat to the general public. And whereas the town board has adopted the building department's unsafe building investigation report regarding the premises and directed the issuance of an order of notice requiring the demolition or repair of the premises and the setting of a public hearing regarding the order and notice, and whereas Said order and notice of public hearing has been served and posted, which order included a direction that required work begin immediately and must be commenced not later than 30 days from service of the order and notice and be completed no later than 60 days thereafter and gave further notice that on failure to timely comply, the town board is authorized to repair or demolish and remove the building or to seek an injunction to compel the owner to do so and assess the expense thereof against the premises as a special ad valerum levy under the town law, Article 15, and to institute a proceeding to collect the expenses of such work, and whereas the town of Poughkeepsie has in order and notice reserved its right to proceed more rapidly with the remediation of this site if it's required pursuant to town code 71-12, and whereas the legal notice of public hearing was posted on September 30th, 2019, and published in the Poughkeepsie Journal on October 3rd, 2019, and whereas said public hearing has been held this day, now therefore be it resolved that in the event that the owner has not timely commenced or completed the repair or demolition, the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie authorizes and directs the building department to demolish and remove the building by town employees or by the responsible contractor, making the lowest price proposal to the town consistent with the town code 71-10, and thereafter assess against the premises and levy and collect <coughs> expenses of... Same as provided in Article 15 of the town law for the levy and collection of a special ad valerum levy and be it further resolved that this work is an enforcement proceeding and is therefore a type 2 action which is exempt from <coughs> environmental review under 6 NYCRR 617.5 C29. So moved. Second. A motion and second. Any questions? Um, just a quick question. The, the resolution says in the event the owner has not timely commenced, how long do they have? It's a 30, 60 day window. They have to begin within 30 days. They're instructed to start immediately. Okay. They have to do their actions within 30 and complete it within 60 days. So after I, 60 days. I typically days, don't go out until after the 61st day. So after 60 days passes, then we can. Then we step can take actions. Good. Thank you. And the action is going to be to tear the house down, demolish it. Yes. Should that would be what I would recommend for this structure. Yeah. Hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. That brings us to the second public hearing, 16 Bethlehem Place. Make a motion to open the second public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody here to 16 Bethlehem Place? Come on back up. You guys... <laughs> We'll let you speak while Wayne's getting his. I'm still Victor Chapman. <laughs> <laughs> we took the Wayne. We took these pictures yesterday. This is out in front on the front lawn uh, of um, John's house on 16. Really? That must have been like old septic or whatever. Oh, I don't okay. know. That's new. I'll that's new. Take a look. Okay. Then that's the, the, the tree that's on, on 14. <laughs> now this is. We took these yesterday, but this was a hard picture to see because. The sun was in the way, but on top of this dormer here is the rubber is a rubber roof, and that's where it's blowing, it's blowing off, and it's down to the wood, okay, up on top. So that's like by today, that's got to be leaking. Okay, you know, that Great. was yesterday. This was yesterday in the apartment in the back. 
This is just how we took the picture. The door wide open. Just like that. <laughs> okay. You Want to know? speak into the mic so we can hear you? Excuse me? Speak, speak into the mic so we can hear you, too. Okay, Mike. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. You want to see the picture? <laughs> well, you can leave the picture with Felicia so she has them. You know. And then... Uh, and these are the ones that you had from, from over there. You know, and now the apartment in the back, the door was forced open. Wayne, Wayne, I, I, I watched Wayne personally close the door the last time you were there. It's back open. I mean, there's people going in and out of these houses. You know, I, they must be going in at night, late, whether it's later at night. Yesterday, the door was open in the apartment in the back of that house. And now did the bank... When I spoke to you today earlier, you you said you talked to John Natoli. Right. He don't own that house no more because he had a reverse mortgage. Mm. Okay. So um, I had to go home and act like an adult and do homework. This is the owner of the house. This is the reverse mortgage place. Okay. This is how much they were fined for ripping people off. Over, over the um, mm -hmm. years, happened in 19. And uh, these are all the complaints of this company right here that I printed out. You can have this because I have another copy. In fact, I have, <clears throat> if you want to make a copy. Do you have any comments, Victor, about that? Excuse me? It's only three minutes. Do you have any comments? I'm I'm down to a minute, right? I got I got more time. Waiting for Wayne to set up here. <laughs> no, I wanted I wanted to give you the phone number with the uh, the account number to that. You can give that. You can give that to me. Right here. This is the name of the place with the account number. Okay. And and uh, and the phone number is right there. Got it. You know. I mean, if you want to stop by and get it or make a copy or whatever, you know. But. Just, okay, for the last thing, because I know you want, want to get rid of me, but um, yesterday when, when we seen with the door was open in the apartment in the back, now they got roofers there that came there that you couldn't even call them a handyman, all right, that you could actually look up and, and, and see outside uh, on, the, on this house that's apartment in the back. So right now you could probably take a shower if you wanted to, you know. And, and it's just, this is a house that I, I, I could have had it sold four times. I knew four different people that wanted to buy this house because when John Natoli lived there and he left, it was moving condition. He was very meticulous, right or wrong, yeah. you know. And it's just why they're, why they're allowing it to get so run down that nobody it's going to end up like the other house. And, and you know... <laughs> Hopefully we can move it forward and at least get it secured. You know, but uh, Wayne has the, the it's called C-Link or whatever, the reverse mortgage places. Okay. I guess they've been buying a lot of the reverse mortgage companies out and having their way with the people. Right. Well, so you, I Rick. wouldn't recommend anybody getting a reverse mortgage. <laughs> no, not a good option. You know, so, can I second that? Thank you, thank you Victor. Wayne. Thank you, Vic. Wayne, can I ask a thank question before... Before you get started, I have a question. Is there anything in the interim, like while we're waiting the 60 days, that can be done uh, about the doors open and everything? Is there anything we, like any boarding? I can go back and close do? the doors, which I've done before, yeah. um, just to close the doors. Mm -hmm. um, once, once we take an action of securing a structure, mm -hmm. we need to wait for time, the time Okay. pieces to expire got it to, okay. to actually do that to do or anything. we'd be enforcing something that sure. is, is out of the time frame that that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is allowed by under town law yeah okay wayne Seashan, deputy bill inspector town of poughkeepsie mm -hmm. so this is this is what you see when you drive up to 16. Mm -hmm. um, they did a roofing job i want to say probably two and a half three years ago there and this is what was left in the front yard. Now, they come and occasionally mow, but this is what Vic and, and the rest of the people on the street that have to go up there and turn around, this is what you're looking at. So these are some of the things that we're, you know, and, and I'm pointing them out, and they don't look terrible from this viewpoint, but it's, it's a 
piece of the condition of the state of this house, mm -hmm. what you're seeing there. It's just, you know, the, the, the general neglect. Doesn't look like much here, but things are falling, which means water's inside. It's doing its corrosive action. No, I can't point out with this. The upper right of that front porch, it's got a hole there. I mean, that's, if, if somebody did a job, boy, I'd be really worried about the rest of it if this is what happens to their roofing jobs, you know? Mm -hmm. So pieces are falling, just as you can see up at the eave up there. The drip edge mm -hmm. that's normally there, you know, it's starting to pull away and fall. This is the pool deck in the back. It's, it's failed already, as you can tell. The enclosure is no longer the enclosure. The electric mm, was marginal. And this still had power as of July of this year. So only one of them was in control. The other one was shut off. But if you look at the, uh, you can't really see. This is really dark on here. That's the service entry cables. Mm. Anywhere else, I would, I would talk to the homeowner about getting those replaced mm -hmm. as soon as possible. The deck's starting to buckle. We have wires down right through the weeds. And this is where that wire that you just saw before, that's, this is where it's going to. This is a connection directly into the house that they had a portable generator there. Obviously, somebody took the generator, <coughs> kind of ripped up the electric, and walked away. So we've gone through the processes that we normally do for these kinds of things. We give them orders to remedy. We know that John Natoli, who was the registered owner, was not there. His wife has passed away. She was on the, on the property listing as well. But we have to take certain actions. So typically what I do with these kinds of things, we call Central Hudson. If there's gas, we have them turn off the gas. To curtail the electric, I have them cut it at the pole. It makes it a little more difficult for somebody to just bypass you know, a meter which you can do without a lot of fanfare. But it's definitely going to be different, you know, trying to get up a pole and get a pole reconnected. Uh, had the water turned off by the town so that that damage won't happen. So we got another call back, not surprisingly, to this place. So we issued the same types of sets of documents we talked about on 14. with all the cure dates. This is what I walk up to on the 28th, the, the door wide open to the house. Standard business, I get up, I knock on the door, I yell at least three times who I am, who I'm with, is there anybody here? Usually if somebody's around, they'll answer, but I usually don't run into that very often because I, you know, typically if it's an abandoned house, you don't usually find people there. So somebody really blew that out. That, you know, that's your storm door closer. Mm -hmm. You can see the crook in it. So that's what the kitchen is looking like now. Oh, they blew out the doorknob, well, the key core. Mm -hmm. This was some of John's paperwork. John Natoli, he left there. So it kind of gives you the ballpark idea of when the last time somebody was inside taking care of the property. <coughs> so you can't tell very well. Obviously, a company came in and winterized everything, but they just never took care of it. They never went any further than that. So we've got ceilings falling in and all the insulation coming down. Mm. And this is beginning to happen throughout mm -hmm. 
different rooms, different floor levels, but the sheetrock's coming, and it's got mold up on the inside. Doors and windows open. <clears throat> this was some of the add-ons when they dormered out the building back years and years ago. So here's our pass-through. This is, this is the closet to the master bedroom of the, the front house. The apartment is truly an unlawful apartment. They never had all of the right pieces mm -hmm. put together, special use permits, those kinds of things, a building permit. So this is a connection that goes directly to the attic space above the apartment. The only other access to that attic space, mm -hmm. a set of pull down stairs. Thankfully, they were open the day I was there. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is the downstairs portion, a little bit of the kitchen. So, somebody took a little bit of care to do some of these things. So, it wasn't, it wasn't just like, Piecemeal together. But now we're seeing all of those things that happen when it gets neglected. Again, no permits for any of this stuff. So not that it can't be fixed, not that it can't, you know, live another life. But again, we had power, you know, back in that July date when I was looking at these things. And this is the same condition. So now we're, you know, now we're into August and you're seeing, you know, the debris of, of what was left over. Basement. So they got a few issues that they, you know, somebody would need to deal with. It, and again, it's not that the bones are bad. You know, these are, these are things that can be worked through. <clears throat> but typically you don't, screw jacks are, were a, a 1940s, 1950s era type of way to help secure framing. Don't use that anymore. That's been, you know, that's kind of done a different way now. Got some effervescence going on. That's what you're seeing on that wall, that white material. And what that is is, is water osmosing from the outside mm -hmm. through the actual concrete block, mm -hmm. and it forms a layer of this film on the inside. So it's something that should be addressed if somebody was going to do something with the place. Two 275 gallons, and both of them have some fuel in them. As you can see, the light was still on. The electric was flowing there. So I, a little bit of cobbing going on there. Mm -hmm. Obviously needing some help. Mm -hmm. This is their electric, and it just, it, it scared me when I looked at it. Some of this was wiring that's outside from that generator and from some of those pool wirings that were all energized at the time. Obviously, we've had the electric shut off so that this can't be a problem, but it's going to have to be dealt with. So that's the entryway to the back, and obviously Vic showed us a picture that the door is wide open now. That's what it was in September when I went for my compliance inspection. Just open. 
Mm -hmm. So we're back at the same standards for your Chapter 71 issues. And that would be the end. Does anyone have any questions about it? No. The same question, Wayne. What's the best solution for this? Is this something that has to be destroyed? It, it, has, it has good bones, um, in my opinion. Um, it can be worked with and brought back, but it, needs, it truly needs to be secured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all ground level entry points would, would need to be covered and sealed off. Um, if this thing doesn't get a life of its own, meaning somebody buys it and starts to work on it, it it's only going to be a year before other things. We're not going to take and, and use the taxpayer money to put a new roof on the building. No. You know, that's not going to happen. If we're going to spend the money, it's going to be to take that thing out of there and, and put it back to a hole in the ground. So... You know, would I want to do it? I would want to say, let's get the building secured. Mm -hmm. And if they show movement, if someone shows movement, we can always stop a demolition order, mm -hmm. just like we've done before. But at least if we can take care of some of this now. Mm -hmm. Have we checked? Are you pre precluded from having a contractor go there and, and board it up? Is that part of the 60-day rule? That's what I was asking before. No, we, we just haven't done it. Um, we typically do the securing of it ourselves mm -hmm. um, just because we can, and it's probably a little bit of a lesser expense than if we have to go to the outside. But we can go to the outside. If, you know, There is nothing stopping us from doing that. Either way, inside or out, okay. Have we checked it all on the tax status? Is anybody paying the property taxes on this? They, there were taxes paid, but they were, if I remember in the report, they were past due. So within, we could board it up, secure it up, and hopefully in... Within another, within that same year, I, I, I would believe that it would probably fall to it. the county. Good. Because one of my problems has gone to the county and actually has a new owner now. So we're really hopeful that they're going to clean it up. Right. And that's, you know, w when the county gets involved, sometimes things take a different bend. Yeah. Anybody else? No. Whereas by resolution 918 SC2 of 2019 adopted on September 18th. Hold on. Make a motion to close second public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Savone. Okay. Whereas, by resolution 918 SC2 of 2019, adopted on September 18, 2019, Town Board Town of Poughkeepsie has determined that the premises in the buildings located at 16 Bethlehem Place, Poughkeepsie, County of Dutchess, State of New York, bearing grid number 6262030554487, the premises, the owner of record being John and Josephine Natoli, are dangerous, unsafe, and debilitated, and an imminent threat to the general public. And whereas the town board has adopted the building department's unsafe building investigation report regarding the premises and directed the issuance of an order and notice requiring the demolition or repair of the premises in the setting of a public hearing regarding the order and notice and whereas said order and notice of a public hearing has been served and posted which order included a direction that the required work begin immediately and must be commenced not later than 30 days from the service of the order of notice and be completed no later than 60 days thereafter and gave further notice that on failure to timely comply the town board is authorized to repair or demolish and remove the building or to seek an injunction to compel the owner to do so and assess the expense thereof against the premises as a special ad valorem levy under town law article 15 and to institute a proceeding to collect the expenses of such work and whereas the town of Poughkeepsie has in the order and notice served reserved its right to proceed more rapidly with rem remediation of this site uh, if it is required per certain to town code 71-12 Whereas the legal notice of public hearing was posted on September 30th, 2019, and published in the Poughkeepsie Journal on October 3rd, 2019. And whereas said public hearing has been held this day, now therefore be it resolved that in the event that the owner has not timely commenced or completed the repair or demolition, the town board, town of Poughkeepsie, authorizes and directs the building department to demolish 
and remove building by 10 employees or by a responsible contractor, making the lowest price proposal to the town consistent with town code 71-10, and to thereafter assess against the premises and levy and collect the expenses of the same as provided in Article 15 of town law for the levy and collection of a special ad valorem levy. And be it further resolved that this work is an enforcement proceeding and is therefore, therefore a type 2 action which is exempt from the environmental review under New York CRR 617.5C29. So moved. Second. Got a motion and second. Any further questions on this? Is there any way that we could go in sooner than the 60 days and at least remove that roofing debris that's in the front, the nice order, everyone? Is that allowed? Something that could happen? We'd be out of our parameter. Oh, okay. So the, we have to wait. The, the the town law gives specifics of 30. They have to have it started by 30 days and have to have it completed by 30. Okay. If Even we though stepped, it's not part of the building If we stepped itself? in before then, we'd be outside of the scope of our own law. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you, Victor. Number <laughs> five. Matt. Uh, resolution 5, be it resolved, the town board of the town of Kipps, it is hereby accept with appreciation a donation of $2,000 from Mr. Paul Koch, uh, which donation will be used to offset the cost of purchasing two personal body armor vests for use in the police department. So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? just so want to say thank you to Mr. Koch for his donation. He's helped the police department on different occasions. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Whereas a map, report, and plan, including an estimate of costs, have duly have been duly prepared in such a manner, in such in such detail as heretofore been determined by the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie, Dutchess County, New York, relating to certain water improvements to serve a benefit area in said town to be known as Town Water Improvement Area Eight, the area whose boundaries are the same as those of the existing water improvement area 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, being the entire area of said town outside of any villages, as more fully shown upon map on file in the office of the town clerk, which map is available for inspection by any person or persons interested in the same during regular office hours at said office, and whereas said map, plan, and report, including an estimate of cost, were prepared by competent engineer, duly licensed by the State of New York, and have been filed in the office of the town clerk of said town, where the same are available during regular office hours for examination by any person or persons interested in the subject matter thereof, and whereas the capital improvements proposed in connection with the establishment of Water Improvement Area 8 of the town of consists of the town's share of the cost of replacement of the existing ultraviolet disinfection units at the joint water treatment plant, including original furnishings, equipment, machinery, apparatus, apparatus, as well as other incidental improvements and expenses in connection therewith at a maximum estimated cost of $2,233,950, and whereas the maximum estimate cost shall be authorized to be financed by issuance of the town of Poughkeepsie of its serial bonds with a maximum maturity not in excess of 40-year period prescribed by local finance law, and whereas the town board duly adopted an order on the 21st day of August 2019 calling a public hearing to be held at the town hall over Rocker Road of Poughkeepsie, New <coughs> York, in said town on the 4th day of September 2019 at 7 o'clock p.m. prevailing time to consider the question of a map plan and report and maximum amount proposed to be expended in connection with the establishment of waterproof improvement area 8 in said town and the improvement proposed therefore at a maximum amount of $2,233,950 and to be heard all persons interested in the subject thereof concerning the same and to take such action thereon as is required by law and whereas the public hearing was duly held at the time and place aforesaid at which all persons interested were heard and whereas the town board 
duly considered all the evidence given at such public hearing and whereas the town board adopted a public interest resolution on September 4th, 2019, the public interest resolution subject to permissive referendum, which authorized the and approved the establishment of water improvement area eight and the construction of a water improvement there in at a maximum estimated cost of two million two hundred thirty three thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars as to which no petition as filed and whereas no application to the office of the state comptroller for approval of said water improvement area is required it having been determined that the estimated expense of a foresaid improvement does not exceed one-tenth of one percent of the full valuation of the taxable real property for the area of the town outside of any villages and Whereas, upon lapsing the period for filing a petition for a permissive referendum have occurred without petition, and the establishment of Water Improvement Area 8 is effective, now therefore be it ordered by the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie, Dutchess County, New York, as follows. Section 1. It having heretofore been found to and determined by the Town Board to be in the public interest to provide the establishment of water improvement area 8 in the town of Poughkeepsie, Dutchess County, New York, and the improvement proposed, therefore, at a maximum amount of $2,233,950. The town board hereby moralizes, memorializes the establishment of the water improvement area 8. Section 2, the town clerk, having been directed in order to cause a certified copy of the public interest resolution to be duly recorded within 10 days of adoption in the office of the town clerk of the County of Dutchess, New York, did duly cause the recordation of the public interest resolution of the town board dated September 4, 2019 in the office of the clerk of the County of Dutchess, New York, which, as also recorded, shall be presumptive evidence of the regulatory of the proceedings and the action taken by the town board in relation to a foresaid establishment of Water Improvement District 8. Section 4, this order shall take effect immediately. The question of adoption of the ongoing order was duly put to vote on roll call, which results are as follows. Jeff Renahan? Aye. Bill Carlos? Aye. Jessica Lopez? Aye. Jay Baisley? Okay, I'll skip you. Mike Safon? Aye. Matt Willover? Aye. Ann Shershen? Aye. Jay Baisley? Aye. <laughs> Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. I just want to know do you get paid by the word, Jim? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can honest with you, when I looked at that, I thought maybe we could call Douglas Goodfriend and have him come over. see if we could uh, have a few few paragraphs. <laughs> Just so everybody but knows. I think not. Bond resolution. So. This is for the ultraviolet down on um, yeah. Joint Water Board. Right. Even though we're borrowing this money or putting out to borrow it, we have applied for a grant, which hopefully will cover a good proportion. So we may not have to borrow hopefully none of it, but if anything, part of it. This is just part of the grant process that we had to put this in place prior. 6B. I'll do 6B. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> at a regular meeting of the Town Board of Town of Poughkeepsie, Dutchess County, New York, held at Town Hall, 1 over Rocker Road, in Poughkeepsie, New York, in said town, the 16th day of October, 2019, 7 p.m. prevailing time, this meeting was called to order by John Basie. Upon roll being called, the following were present. You can skip Here. that. What? You can skip that. You can start at the next page. Okay. On resolution date October 16, 2019, resolution authorizing the issuance of $2,233,950 serial bonds of the town of Poughkeepsie, Dutchess County, New York, pay the cost of certain water improvements to serve water improvement area 8 in the town of Poughkeepsie, Dutchess County, New York, whereas pursuant to proceedings heretofore duly had and taken in accordance with the provision of Article 12C of the town law, more particularly resolution dated September 4, 2019, Said town board is determined to be in the public interest to establish water improvement area eight at a maximum estimated cost of two million two hundred thirty three thousand nine hundred fifty dollars, which resolution was subject to permissive referendum, as to which no petition was filed, and a final order was thereafter adopted on the date hereof, 
and whereas a capital project, therefore, as here and after described, has been determined to be a Type 2 action pursuant to the regulations of the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, promulgated pursuant to State Environmental Quality Review Act, implementation which, as proposed, has been determined will not result in a significant adverse environmental impact, and whereas is now this desire to provide funding for such project, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Town Board of Town Poughkeepsie, Dutchess County, New York, as follows. Section 1. For the specific object or purpose of paying the cost of certain water improvements for the establishment of water improvement area 8, consisting of the town share the cost of replacing of the existing ultraviolet <coughs> disinfectant u disinfection units at the joint water treatment plant, including original furnishings, equipment, machinery, appurtenances, and other incidental improvements and expenses at the maximum estimated cost of $2,233,950, which specific object or purpose is hereby authorized it said maximum estimated cost, they're hereby authorized to be issued $2,233,950 in serial bonds of said town pursuant to provisions of local finance law. Section 2. It's hereby determined that the plan for financing the improvements for the establishment of water improvement area 8 is by the issuance of $2,233,950 serial bonds of said town authorized to be issued pursuant to provisions of this bond resolution. Section 3. It is hereby determined that the period of probable usefulness of the aforesaid specific object or purpose is 40 years pursuant to, pursuant to subsection 1 of paragraph A of section 11 of the local finance law. It is hereby determined that the maximum maturity of the serial bonds here and authorized will exceed five years. Section 4. Subject to revision of local finance law, the power to authorize the issuance of and to sell bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance and sale of the serial bonds here and authorized including renewals of such notes, is hereby delegated to the supervisor, the chief financial officer. Such notes shall be of such terms, form, and contents, and shall be sold in such manner as may be prescribed by a supervisor consistent with the provisions of local finance law. Section 5. The faith and credit, credit of the said town of Poughkeepsie, Dutchess County, New York, are hereby irrevocably pledged to the payment of the principal and interest on such obligations <coughs> the same respectively become due and payable. An annual appropriation shall be made in each year sufficient to pay the principal of and interest on such obligations becoming due and payable in such year. To the extent not paid from other sources, there shall be annually levied upon and all the taxable real property deemed to be especially benefit therein said water improvement area 8. Amount sufficient, therefore, but to the extent not paid thereby, all the taxable real property within the said town shall be subject to the levy of an ad valorem tax without limitation as to the rate or sufficient or amount sufficient to pay principal and interest on such obligations. Section 6. The powers and duties of advertising such bonds for sale, conducting the sale and awarding the bonds, are hereby delegated to the supervisor, who shall advertise such bonds for sale, conduct the sale, and award the bonds in such manner as he shall deem best for the interests of the town, including, but not limited to, the power to sell bonds to New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation, provided. However, that in the exercise of these delegated powers, he shall comply fully with provisions of local finance law and any order rule of the state comptroller applicable to the sale of municipal bonds. The receipt of the supervisor shall be a full acquittance of the purchase of such bonds, who shall not be obligated to see the application to purchase the money. Section 7. All the matters except as provided herein relating to such bonds, including determining whether to issue such bonds, authorized herein, in one or more series, and all matters related thereto, in the manner of the execution of the same, including the consul consolidation with other issues, and also the ability to issue serial bonds with substantial level or declining annual debt service, all matters relating thereto, shall be determined by the supervisor, the chief financial officer of such town. Such bonds shall contain substantial validity clause provided for in section 52 of the local finance law, shall otherwise be in such form contain such Cycles in addition to those required by Section 51 of local finance law, as the supervisor shall determine consistent with the provision of local finance law. Section 8. The supervisor is hereby authorized at the sole discretion to execute a project finance and or loan agreement and any other agreements with the New York State Department of Health and or New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation, including amendments thereto and including any instruments and amendments thereto, and the effectuation thereof in order to affect the finance or refinance of the specific object or purpose described in Section 1 hereof, or a portion thereof, by bond, 
and or note issued of said town in the event of the sale of same to New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation. Section 9. The power to issue and sell notes to New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation pursuant to Section 169 of the local finance law is hereby delegated to a supervisor. Such notes shall be of such terms, forms, and contents as may, pre- may be prescribed by supervisor consistent with the provisions of local finance law. 10. The intent of this resolution is to give the supervisor sufficient authority to execute those applications, agreements, instruments, and to do any sim- similar acts necessary to affect the issuance of the aforesaid serial bonds and or notes without resorting to further action of this town board. Section 11. The validity of such bonds and bond anticipation notes may be contested only if, one, such obligations are authorized for an, ob- for an object or purpose for which said town is not authorized to expend money. Two, the provisions of law which should be complied with at the date of publication of this resolution are not substantially complied with. An action, suit, or proceeding contesting such validity is commenced within 20 days after the date of such publication. Three, such obligations are authorized in violation of the provisions of the Constitution. Section 12. The resolution which takes effect immediately shall be published in full in the official newspaper together with the notice of the town clerk in substantial form provided in Section 81 of Local Finance Law. The question of the adoption of the foregoing resolution was duly put to a vote on roll call, which resulted as... So moved. So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, Before we do roll call, anybody vote? any questions on this? Sorry. No? Okay. It does say I have to publish the whole thing in the official newspaper, and they do charge by the word. Just saying. Oh. 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 Jeff? Aye. Bill Carlo? Aye. Jessica Lopez? Aye. Michael Sophone? Aye. Matt Wolover? Aye. Ann Shershin? Aye. And Jay Baisley? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes 7 0. So the supervisor did not move that? Yes, he did. He was okay, and it was seconded by Jeff. Brand. Jeff Brand. Brand. Good. Great. Okay. Thank you. Domestic Violence Awareness Month Proclamation for 2019. Whereas domestic violence remains a pervasive issue across the United States and the world, one which negatively implicates the town of Poughkeepsie and our surrounding area, and with serious implication for personal and community health, and whereas domestic violence does not discriminate and touches all communities regardless of age, race, disability, gender identity, or socioeconomic status, and whereas considering medical expenses, lost productivity, legal costs, and property loss and damage, domestic violence costs victims an exorbitant amount over their lifetime and has collectively cost the United States $3.6 trillion. And whereas research shows that by creating communities where people are connected, supportive, and care for one another can reduce incidents of domestic violence. And whereas every day in the town of Poughkeepsie, individuals and organizations, particularly the Grace Smith House and the Children's Home of Poughkeepsie, play a part in supporting people impacted by domestic violence, providing services, including therapeutic, legal, educational, housing, advocacy, and medical services. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie, on behalf of all residents, does hereby proclaim October 2019 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the Town of Poughkeepsie and urges all residents to become involved in efforts to prevent and respond to domestic violence and recognize the impact of domestic violence in our community. So moved. Second. Good motion. Second. Any questions? This. I just wanted to say something. Um, I wanted to recognize Domestic Violence Awareness Month on the local level. And along with that, I thought it would be nice to support one of our um, one of our organizations, Grace Smith House. So we have put together uh, raffle baskets, and Taryn is going to be sending out emails to all the employees of the town uh, to buy some raffle tickets. Uh, I want to thank all of the local businesses that have donated to make these baskets amazing, much bigger than we thought it was going to be. We've been able to put together nine baskets. So really quick, uh, the Hudson Valley Renegades, Sage Nail Salon, Crunch Fitness, Vera's Pizza, uh, River Station, Savona's, uh, Spins Bowl, Hudson Valley Healing Center, Arlington Auto and Tire, Gravity Vault, Bounce Poughkeepsie, Mirabu and in Spa, Barber House, Adams Barrier Farms, Barton Orchards, Plan B Brewery, uh, Channingville Deli, 
Halftime Beverage, Lux Salon, Harney and & Sons, and the Wheelhouse of Poughkeepsie uh, have all made really great donations, and we have baskets put together. So we'll be sending out raffle information. Any residents that want to uh, buy tickets and, and get a chance to win, you can come in to the Finance and Personnel Office and do that anytime this month, and we'll raffle off on the 31st. Sounds good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 7 0. Resolution 8. Good resolved pursuant to and in accordance with the provisions of Section 106 of the town law and other applicable provisions of law, the tentative statement of estimated expenditures and revenues heretofore submitted by the supervisor is adopted as the preliminary budget of the town of Poughkeepsie for the fiscal year beginning. January 1st, 2020, and such preliminary budget is on file in the town clerk's office of the town of Poughkeepsie for public inspection. And be it further resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby set the 30th day of October 2019 at 7 p.m. at the town hall, town of Poughkeepsie, 1 over Rocker Road, Poughkeepsie, New York, as the date, time, and place of the public hearing on the preliminary budget for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2020 at which time all, interest par all interested parties will have the opportunity to be heard. Which preliminary budget was approved by this board and filed with the town clerk? And be it further resolved that the town clerk is hereby authorized, empowered, and directed to advertise said public hearing to the Poughkeepsie Journal no less than five days prior to the public hearing and to post the same on the town clerk's bulletin board. Be it further resolved this resolution shall take effect immediately. So moved. Second. A motion second. Any questions on this? This is just to fit in. As everybody notices that we had another meeting. It's just to fit in with the time frame of what the budget has to do. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby approve the application submitted by Gerard Phillip and does hereby grant approval to the Croft Corners Volunteer Fire Company to hold its annual Halloween parade on Saturday, October 26, 2019 at 1 o'clock p.m., which parade will start at Spack and Kill Todd Middle School parking lot and proceed south on Croft Road, west onto Schoolhouse Lane, and end at the Croft Corners Firehouse at 7 Spack and Kill Road, <coughs> and be it further resolved that the town clerk is in receipt of a certificate of liability insurance naming the town of Poughkeepsie as additional insured. So moved. Second. And motion second. Any questions this one? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Be resolved, Town Board, Town of Poughkeepsie, is hereby authorized the supervisor to sign a vehicle cleaning agreement with Bayright Enterprises Incorporated, uh, doing business as foam and wash car wash for the entire Town of Poughkeepsie fleet, a police department fleet as required by the Town of Poughkeepsie Police Department. For the period of January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2021, a copy of Chief Faber's memo along with the proposal is attached. Be it further resolved that Bay Rate Enterprises Incorporated doing business as foam and wash car wash has proposed to continue to provide services at a rate of $800 per month, and the Town Board of Town of Poughkeepsie finds the solicitation of alternative proposal for these services would not be in the best interest of the town. So moved. Second. Get a motion and a second. Any questions this one? No, but it made me realize I forgot to also thank Foam and Wash, who also donated. So <laughs> sorry about that. Thank <laughs> Foam and Wash. <laughs> um, also, just to mention the the. Uh, we're not bidding this out because of Foam and Wash's various locations around. It makes it both locations, and we only have really just not a handful of other one. business to go by. Right, but that's the reason yeah. that they didn't go out for yeah. bid. Cool. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. You're looking for a part time job. <laughs> Resolution 11. Be it resolved, the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie is hereby authorized Rachel uh, Quintana to clean and maintain town property adjacent to her property at 48 Honey Lane, Wappingers Falls, New York, at no cost to the town, contingent upon receipt by the town of, of an executed release and indemnity agreement. So moved. Second. Move motion second. Any questions on this one? All of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Be resolved, the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby set the 30th day of October 2019 at 7 p.m. at Town Hall, Town of Poughkeepsie, 1 over Rocker Road, Poughkeepsie, New York, as and for the time, date, time, and place of a public hearing to consider thereafter vote on acceptance of grant monies for improving the Sheaf Road Park from the Dutchess County, from the County of Dutchess, through the Community Development Grant 
program for the year 2020, of which the town of Poughkeepsie is a member. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any questions on this one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes 7 0. Be it resolved, the Town Board of Town of Poughkeepsie is hereby approved the application submitted by Bob Legacy on behalf of the Arlington Business Improvement District. It is hereby grant approval to the Arlington Business Improvement District to hold a holiday festival on Saturday, December 17, 2019, between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., which application requests the closure of Main Street from Raymond Avenue to Fowler Avenue for the Holiday Festival Shopping Village. Be it further resolved, the Town Board further approves the holiday parade on Saturday, December 7, 2019, between 4.30 p.m. and 6 p.m., which application requests the closure of Manchester Road to Probation Office, Fairmont Avenue from 44 to 55 Arterial to College View, College View Avenue to Raymond Avenue, Raymond Avenue roundabout to Main Street, Main Street from Raymond Avenue to Fowler Avenue, be it further resolved, the town clerk is in receipt of a certificate of liability insurance name of Town of Poughkeepsie as additional insured. So moved. Second. The motion second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes 7 0. And yeah, if you look at all the streets, it's coming across the back and coming around. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's a little longer route, so hopefully get a better participation. Yeah, and Is there a nicer tree there at the Duchess? Yeah, County? we're lighting the tree at the War Memorial, and it's, bigger, it's right? actually bigger. It's two trees together. And it's good. Yes, Highway's going to put the lights on. <laughs> put, put I don't know. That she doesn't want you to forget about that, Mark. She's going <laughs> to. They got that big. The other tree always seems so little. Yeah, well, that's the whole point. What's the shopping village that's going to be there? Oh, it's great. We'll just wait. They're, they're going to be closing that section. Hey, Mr. Uh, Ballard, I think we have a costume you could fit into. Uh -huh. You've got a little <laughs> chuckle back there. Last year. All right, Jeff, go ahead. Ready? Um, Whereas by resolution 10 2, special consent 2 of 2019, a sanitary sewer pipe zip spot repairs. 2019 two bid award was approved and whereas the awarded bidder American Underground Services had a not to exceed amount which was inadvertently left out of the authorizing resolution now therefore be resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby award the contract for the above cited project to the lowest bidder American Underground Services for the sum of $53,164 for 34 spot repairs and not to exceed amount of $90,760 for 60 spot repairs and be a further resolve that the supervisor is authorized to execute the contract agreement with said contractor upon receipt by the town of all required insurances, bonds, and other submissions. So move. Second. Good motion. Second. Second. Any questions on this? The only comment I have on this is um, these 34 repairs, the extras are only if... The sewer department is doing some of them. If they fall behind, this is just if we have to use them. So it looks like as of today's meeting that they may not have to go any further. So hopefully we'll be done. Good. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Resolution 15. Be it resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize the supervisor to execute a 2019 dial a ride change order. Extending said agreement from January 1, 2020 to December 31, 2020 with the County of Dutchess, which agreement provides for joint service transportation system for the general public with payments made by the Town of Poughkeepsie not to exceed, not to exceed $69,000. So moved. Second. Got a motion second. Any questions on this? It's not really a change order. It's just adding another year, mm -hmm. and the cost went up a uh, a minimum amount sixty eight five forty to sixty nine thousand. So this is the dial a ride one. Right. Yeah. This isn't the regular bus system. No. 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 It's, it's dial a ride for okay. the seniors and our disabled riders. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes seven zero. Be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize the Supervisor to execute the Bonding Security Agreement for Tamarack Heights Subdivision in substantially the form annexed and to accept a surety bond to secure performance of the agreement in form and substance acceptable to him and the Attorney of the Town and be it further resolved that this subdivision has previously been subject of a seeker review and the additional work under the agreement is a Type 2 action under... 6NYCRR 617.5C235. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any questions on this one? 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. I'm going to miss seeing Mr. Lund in my office. <laughs> <laughs> We resolve the Town Board Town of Poughkeepsie is hereby accept the minutes for the following 2019 Town Board meetings to wit. August 7, 2019 regular Town Board meeting. August 21, 2019 Committee of the Whole regular Town Board meeting. September 4, 2019 regular Town Board meeting. December 18, 2019 regular Town Board meeting. October 2, 2019 regular Town Board meeting. So moved. Second. The motion second. Any questions on that one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Uh, resolution 18 is a notification from New Horizons Resources, Inc. about a, a group home at 134 NS Avenue. Uh, resolution 19, be it resolved, the town board of the town of Kipsa. just stop it for a second. Just so people sure. know, resolution 18 is when group homes come in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. we really don't have opposition to them. A lot of times people get nervous about what's going on and how they stand. This is a group home. One individual will be located in the apartments on NS Avenue, and they're just notifying us. And really the only... Time that we could say no if we wanted to say no is there was a saturation in the market, but we just always give the public a chance to speak to see, voice their opinion on it, and we'll contact them because as what I see as of now we have a no, no problem with this at all. Mm. Wait, sorry for that. Sorry, sorry. Uh, resolution 19. Be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby acknowledge receipt of a request on behalf of the Holiday Inn, 2170 South Road, Poughkeepsie, New York, for a waiver of the 30 day review period for a liquor license application. And be it further resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby approve the Town Clerk's forwarding of a waiver and, and consent pursuant to the attached request. So moved. Second. And motion second. Any questions on that one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Number 20. Is there a yeah, it's legal? just a, a notice to legal. Legal versus the town. That brings us to the end of our town board meeting. Um, on the committee to hold. Um, finance committee report. Uh, finance committee is meeting later this evening to discuss the budget. Uh, we've met with a couple of department heads who are going to get back to us. They haven't had a chance to look over the budgets yet, but uh, we are taking comments if any of the department heads have any complaints or concerns about the budget, as well as any from any board members. Okay. Fire advisory. Nothing to report. Government operations, Mr. Carlos. Nothing to report at this time. Land use and planning, Mr. Carlos. Nothing to report. Personnel, Mr. Renahan. Uh, we just, uh, Jessica conducted some interviews uh, today with the Water Department for an open position, so we should be hearing something with that soon. Recreation. Yes, uh, happy to say that over the new playground has been installed at Overrocker, and it's completed except for some fencing that's on order, and I'll let Jessica tell you about the community they, that happened there after I'm done. And the next program coming up is the Halloween Parade and Fall Festival. That's going to be Saturday, November 2nd. It starts, well, with their meeting at noon in the north parking lot of Vassar College, and then they parade on to the lawn that you can see right from a Raymond there at Vassar. And there's costume contests, there's bounce houses, there's going to be games and activities. So it's a great idea, great time. And then for our seniors, November 4th, we have a mystery bus trip. It's only $5, and it's a mystery where they're going. <laughs> and then November 19th is the Thanksgiving dinner at the Senior Center, and there's still seats available, and it's $15. If you'd like to go, just go ahead and register yourself at the Senior Center. And that's all I have. Well, if you don't get a full bus, it's going to be a mystery where you're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they only have a few seats. $5, left. you said? $5. Hmm. And it's a mystery. Cool. And where we go. Yeah. And under that, I also just did want to say we did have our community day at Overrocker Park to celebrate our new playground equipment. Um, it was a really great turnout. I want to especially say thank you to Tommy, our deputy water superintendent, who was there before I got there and stayed and helped uh, serve food and, and you know, just really helped me the entire time. He obviously didn't have to do that, and it was much appreciated. Um, definitely thank you to Taryn Riley, who always helps get word out. Thank you to Jay and Jeff and Bill Carlos for coming and supporting. It was a really good turnout, and I thought it was a really nice day. Uh, I hope to do it for the years to come and continue to grow it and spend time getting our community together once a year. As you said, that was a great park. That was a, a federal-funded uh, project um, through community block grants. 
uh, comes from the federal government. They fund it, and the county doles the money out. So we have to apply in certain neighborhoods to apply. It's all income-based. So this neighborhood happened to apply, and we applied for a couple of years ago. We got the grant. We got a great park, and I want to thank all the people involved. You know, well, as usual, it's all the different departments that always are hands-on. We need something like this to get the last-minute things done. They always seem to jump right in and help us out and get them going, just like the grant we have down with Greenvale right now. I think we're going the right direction with that. The building should be in. I think it's the first or second week in November. They already put the septic systems in, so that building's all ready to go. It's just nice to see that they all work together. Yeah, and obviously, I forget again, forget the biggest one. Uh, thank you to Tom and Brian in the rec department. They did so much work on this project and also were there for the community day to support and cleaned the park the day before. And yeah, as always, yeah. everyone worked really hard. So. Mr. Carlos. Infrastructure. Nothing to report. Okay. I only have a little bit to report. We had our construction report meeting this morning, and we are getting some of the projects that are out there actually off our list to finally get their um, as built in. We've been really pushing to get them off and getting our TCOs in, so we're getting a lot of cleaned up. We had an I and I meeting with the sewer department, and we're on mark to meet uh, our consent order with the DEC. We are notified as of yesterday, the one last item that was hanging out there was a Hagentown pump station, which we have to get it out of the floodplain. And we were holding off. We got a grant early in the year for part of it, but it's a $500,000 project in the FEMA grant we were waiting on. We finally got notified just this week that the FEMA grant is okay. We can move forward with the project. So that's a win-win for us to have to pay for that project, which is almost $500,000. I think we're paying about forty-five or 50000 now. So that was a big win-win for us. I attended the Wappinger School Coalition, where all the mayors and um, supervisors that are in the Wappinger School District, we meet on a quarterly basis to interact on what's getting built out in the town, what their issues are. Last year, we went and worked together on vaping. And this year, we've been discussing how did they figure out where the students are going to go in some of the district locations, because Wappingers is so big, their growth is in the southern end of the county. And the northern end of the county, which is a town, is pretty well built out. So they're trying to iron out how they can get all these students in the right places as it grows. Some of the schools have one or two rooms available. Some have none. So we, we work with issues on them on a daily basis on that. Um, I attended the contact breakfast today. Um, we had a pre press conference at College Hill. The city had finally got their two, two and a half million gallon storage tanks up online, which it takes a, a cistern or will be coming offline in the future. Right now, it's being left online temporarily, but that'll definitely improve the quality of water for both the city and the town. Um, we met at a press conference in the middle of the walkway last week to show our support for um, Dutchess County and Ulster County and New York State in the lawsuit against GE and the EPA um, okay in their final cleanup. If we're doing the best we can with Hudson 7 and the town and the city and working on our water, we want the best water possible. Mm -hmm. Cleaner water in is cleaner water out. So I think this was definitely the spot to be to see it wasn't a party affiliation to see all different parties working together to realize the Hudson River needs to be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. We interviewed a New Paul students would happen to be on water and sewer. He's doing a study on water and sewer and how it works. So he was here the other day and we spent a couple hours with him and we went out it was right before we went out and we discussed the wells with the water department and we were inspecting the wells to see what had to be done out there. I took a webinar on dog parks because it's always been a discussion in the town. Um, I attended the opening of a, a new playground over Rocker Road, and as Jess goes, thank you very much. It was a great event. I think it was a good turnout. Everybody enjoyed it. And so everybody knows it's a handicap accessible park. So it's definitely a place you should go visit. Um, went to child care ribbon cutting ceremony, Dutchess County, Ch Dutchess and Putnam County child care. They're now located out here in Manchester Road. If people don't know, Child care is a big issue for single parents and parents trying to get back in the workforce. They have a complete list of every child care business that's around that is certified. They will help you find child care for your, your child if you need it. And they've, they've been in business 20-some years in this new location. They're real excited about helping people here. So if anybody needs any help with child care, you can contact our office or contact Dutchess Putnam Child Care at 276 Manchester Road. Maybe they can help you find it. Uh, myself and Jeff attended a tri-municipal meeting and finished up their budget. Myself and Bill Carlos, the joint water board meeting, which we're working on the coal tar cleanup with um, Central Hudson, the joint water board, and right now it's temporarily on hold. 
met with Michelle Hook on the Dan Scammer project going on across the river. We held our department head meeting earlier this <coughs> month. I attended the Golden Gathering at Arlington High School, hosted by the county and Stu Serino's office. I uh, attended the Arlington Main Street Design Focus Group meeting, attended the Arlington Bid meeting, attended the Arlington Street Fair, and that's it. I had nothing else. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules for any item on the agenda. So moved. So moved. Anybody would like to say anything in reference to the town at all? This is your time. If not, um, oh. can I? No. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Jay and I have been on the Joint Water Board for several years now. I've been on it for six. When we were at the uh, press conference on the walkway over the Hudson for the PCBs, you could look right down to the uh, Central Hudson site at the end of the walkway. In 1911, there was a coal to gas plant there. They called it manufactured gas. That's the gas that lit the city of the Poughkeepsie and some of the residents in it around 1911, 1912, 1913. The process is pretty simple. They put coal in a boiler, put steam through it, drive off the gas, condense the gas, and uh, send it out to be burned. The byproduct is a thing called coal tar. That was dumped on the ground and into the Hudson River. Central Hudson is under a direction, um, and I agree with it 100%, to remove the coal tar from the Hudson River. There's seven acres of it underneath the walkway bridge right on the, on the river. Some of that section, the coal tar is six feet deep. The process to take that out um, has two steps to it. One is what they call sheeting. They're putting a barrier along the river edge to prevent anything that's on ground from going into the river. And then they were going to start dredging the coal tar out. And every single environmentalist that I have spoken to has told me that coal tar has to come out. That's not something we can leave in our Hudson River. The problem was that the intakes for our water plant are 3,000 feet away. With an incoming tide, there's 12 minutes between something happening at the construction site, the remediation site, and the products of coal tar and the associated chemicals in that are at the entrance to our water plant. Um, there was quite a debate. This has been going on with the Joint Water Board, with the city, with the town for a while. It appeared three weeks ago that Central Hudson was planning to go ahead with the dredging November 1st. DEC had issued them a permit to do the dredging. With what went on with the plant, with the threat to the drinking water, DEC has pulled permission from Central Hudson. They are not allowed to do the dredging. They can finish the sheeting project, but they can't do the dredging. In December of last year, Sheen was inside the plant. Sheen happens when there's disturbance to something like coal tar on the subsurface, and the Sheen is the lighter hydrocarbons that float to the surface. The material is in the entire water column, but the evidence is on the top. In December, the people that work for us at the water plant found sheen in our collecting tanks. That's serious. That means that it had to come through our intakes and into the plant and up into the tanks. The plant was not told. When it happened, the plant sent the sample out to be tested on a mass spectrometer and so did Central Hudson, and their response was it's not their sheen. The plant has been there since 1869, four years after the Civil War. No sheen, no problem, been giving very good water to the people in the city and the town. The sheen happened. 
that kicked off a whole series of events which have led to the point where dredging can occur. Remember I said at the very beginning that from the site where they're working to the intakes at an incoming tide, 12 minutes. They can't even pick up a phone and call us in 12 minutes to tell us to shut the plant down. This is serious because of the consequences of shutting the plant down. Approximately 100,000 people get their drinking water from that plant. We wash our children in that water. We cook with that water. It is, I've seen, I read the reports every month, it is absolutely perfect coming out of that plant. You saw the resolution tonight about the ultraviolet light in our bond. That's to increase the disinfection that goes on down at that plant. We're talking about state-of-the-art stuff to protect our water supply. If something happens and we have to shut the plant down, there's 36 hours of reserve. I'm told by our water department that's give or take because our water system is a demand. Those big water tanks that you see during the day, they go up and down. After 36 hours, there's no water in the water mains to flush toilets or put fires out. That causes significant problems. The DEC, Dutchess County Department of Health, and the New York State Department of Health have fully recognized this and have removed permission from Central Hudson to do the dredging until such time as it can be done with a reasonable guarantee of safety to the water supply. There are a bunch of people who have been involved in this. Jay, me, uh, Mayor Allison, city manager, Natasha Cherry, um, Mark N uh, Newton, who's on our water board for our, for our town. This is a very serious situation that has developed over a period of time and has been dealt with by the people who are responsible to you for the quality of the water. If it changes, if something happens, and I think you all need to be concerned, I know either Jay or I will step in front of you and tell you exactly what's going on. Right now we're safe. Right now there's a do not do anything by the DEC. Um, and until such time as a plan can be developed to allow the coal tar to be removed without threatening the drinking water for 100,000 people. You add our population, the city population, and all the, the different communities around us that's served by the water plant, that pay for water from our plant, it becomes a big number. So I'm reporting that to you tonight because we're at a safe point there's absolutely no threat. Uh, really smart people are doing work every day on this. Central Hudson is in the process of coming up with a better plan so that they can get the stuff out of the river. If you have any questions, you can get a hold of me through the town hall. Just through Jay. for the record, the technology exists to remove the coal tar safely. It just costs a lot more than dredging, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody other questions? Nope. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good evening, everybody.